Welcome back to CBS News. I'm Lana Zak. And I'm Errol Barnett. Lawmakers on Capitol Hill still sharply divided over averting a government shutdown with just days away from the deadline. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy is pushing his colleagues to get behind a short-term spending bill. However, multiple House conservative lawmakers say they will not support it. Senators are pushing to pass a short-term bill of their own to keep the government open. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer is criticizing McCarthy's approach. We need bipartisanship. If he could persists in partisanship, which he's doing now, by always looking over his hard right shoulder, he will create a shutdown. CBS News congressional correspondent Scott McFarlane joins us now. Listening to Democrats, it sounds like they're saying Republicans are creating the shutdown, but with lawmakers so divided, how likely is an agreement on these varying spending bills? Perhaps the most ominous sign, Errol, is that over the past 24 hours, we've heard a lot of members of Congress trying to fix blame on the other. And if you're doing blame fixing at this point, you're probably pretty mm -hmm. pessimistic a deal's going to come through. The House Democratic leader spoke late this morning and said that this is a Republican shutdown. The Republicans are causing it by not passing anything out of the House. Republicans with whom we spoke earlier today said they're going to put something on the floor tomorrow a short-term deal of their liking that they know the Senate won't go for. But they're going to try to box in the U.S. senators. But at this moment, nobody's talking about a compromise that everybody can sign on to, which makes a shutdown likely, if not a possible, uh, a certainty at this moment. We spoke with Pennsylvania Democrat Summer Lee today, one of the Democrats who is saying that this shutdown will hurt constituents, even if they don't work for the federal government. Let's take a listen to her explanation. If we are denying people the ability to pay their food bills right now, then we're creating more problems down the line. If people get evicted or suffer from evictions in this time period, then they're creating bills down the line. So this isn't a 30-day thing or a week thing. This is something that's going to have a lasting impact on working class people. But these folks aren't working class people, so they probably don't understand that framing. Errol and Lana, let me give you a brief timetable here. The U.S. Senate will likely pass its compromise bipartisan bill, or at least start the process of it tonight with a final vote Saturday or Sunday right up against the deadline. The House plans to pass or try to pass its bill tomorrow right ahead of that deadline. But the reality hasn't changed here. Neither of those proposals is going to pass the other chamber. So we are in this interminable deadlock, and a government shutdown is not just looming, but seems imminent. Well, uh, along those lines, Speaker McCarthy has now called for a meeting with President Biden. Scott, how involved has the White House been in trying to get these spending bills actually over the finish line? The last time the Speaker in the White House had these high-level negotiations up against the de deadline was just a few months ago when we had that debt ceiling standoff. It was a compromise fostered by the White House and Speaker McCarthy. It worked. It got through the House, got through the Senate, and averted a debt ceiling calamity. The problem for everybody involved is... A lot of Kevin McCarthy's Republicans, they just flat out hated that compromise, and they have held it against him ever since. And that may be where some of this inflexibility is coming from. Republicans don't want to see the speaker cut a deal with the president, even though the speaker is calling for a meeting with the president. Everybody seems so intransigent at this moment. You wouldn't know we're kind of coming up against a deadline. I think of this analogy. It's Christmas Eve. You have to buy the gifts by tomorrow or the kids will be disappointed. It's not a time to be a picky shopper and look for just the best item on the shelf. You take what is there. There are some members of Congress who say, let's just take what is there, buy ourselves a month or two, and then try to perfect our list. At this moment, there's not even an agreement on a short-term deal to keep the lights on and the doors open, which is why everybody seems to be resigned to a shutdown. Yeah, it's quite ominous, Scott. I also want to ask you about New Jersey Senator Bob Menendez. He's facing these bribery charges, the indictment. He's meeting with his Democratic colleagues, some of whom have loudly called for him to step down. He's already said he intends to continue. Who's trying to change whose minds exactly today? Yeah, Errol, that's going to be a big focus for America Decides here on CBS News later today. What becomes of Senator Bob Menendez? He has 30 of his fellow Senate Democrats who say he should resign. That the allegations are so provocative and so profound that you can't fight those charges and serve New Jersey ably at the same time. 
He's going to go behind closed doors and talk to those Senate Democrats today, try to make his case on why he should stay. Republicans are keeping their hands clean on this. They say it's up to Democrats to figure out what to do with Bob Menendez. If Bob Menendez doesn't have the support of his own party. It makes serving here so much more difficult because you need, if nothing else, your own party colleagues to have your back and work with you. Pivotal afternoon for Bob Menendez right here at the U.S. Senate. All right, Scott McFarland, thank you. And you can watch America Decides at 5 p.m. Eastern right here on CBS News.